dog keeps making that noise. Wow, I look pale. Hey guys, Heidi Breeb here. I just spent like 25 minutes trying to find a way to not look like a ghost in this video and it's not gonna happen. First I thought it was because I dyed my hair dark and then I thought it was because the lighting was bad and then finally I realized no it's because I have COVID. I am currently ill and I can only assume that my body is prioritizing blood being sent to areas that support the antibodies fighting the virus and taking that blood directly away from my face. So this is what we get. This is also why at times it's probably gonna sound like I just smoked like 12 packs of cigarettes to myself. Anyway, now that we have that out of the way, uh, I wanted to talk about something today that I think is particularly a problem for a lot of younger ENFPs. So the older I get, I think the less that I personally find myself struggling with making major decisions because there is something that comes with having the life experience and the resource to change course if you make the wrong decision that takes a lot of stress off of decision making. But when ENFPs are young, I find that quite a few of us, quite a few P's in general, probably FPs more specifically, experience a lot of difficulty with decision making, like a very disproportionate amount. And I think that one of the main reasons is because those of us who use introverted feeling, so ENFPs, INFPs, ESFPs and ISFPs in particular, have this kind of constant checking in that we do with ourselves, where we're always wondering, am I okay? How am I feeling? What is going on in my inner world? So if we stop feeling good about a decision that we made, or if we wish that we had made another decision, it's not that we're going to regret things in higher proportion than other people, it's that we're going to be a lot more conscious of the regret that we feel. Like it's gonna be right there on the surface of our awareness, and we are not going to give ourselves a break from it. So this video is kind of how to make a decision, but I think more so the important work lies in how to accept the decisions once we do make them and how to not spend half of our lives in these alternate realities that we create for ourselves inside of our minds where we made a different decision and we think that everything on that planet is better and our lives as we are experiencing them on this version of reality pale in comparison in every sense of the word to the alternate life that we could have chosen. Maybe this should have been called how to make peace with a decision. It's not as catchy though. I don't like it as much. But anyways, if this is something that you see yourself in, if this is a challenge that you can identify yourself struggling with, we are gonna talk today about how to make better decisions. And once we have made them, how to not spend our entire lives wondering what would have happened if we had chosen something else. I think one of the first big mistakes that most ENFPs make when it comes to making decisions that they end up regretting is not allowing ourselves enough time to try on different options and see what feels right for us, right? So a lot of feelers in general, I'm gonna say, but especially feeling perceiving types have been kind of brought up to believe that anytime they feel indecisive or like they can't pick a path forward, the thing they have to do is just look at what makes the most sense and decide on that at the expense of their emotions. Now, this is how you make a good decision for a TJ. It is not how you make a good decision for a perceiver. For a perceiver, our skill set, the thing that makes us the most ourselves, the most informed, the most confident, the most able to make the impact on the world that we need to make, lies in our ability to fuck around and find out. I love that I can swear in this video because I just put the F word in the title. Normally I like try to hold back a little bit depending on what the video is, but uh, no, it's, it's a fucking field day in this one. If you are not giving yourself the opportunity to expose yourself to as many different possibilities as you can within the range of whatever it is that you're trying to make a decision about, you are robbing yourself of the ability to make a good decision, okay? Because your process literally involves figuring out as much as you can about a whole bunch of different areas and then tuning into how you feel about each different option and making a decision based on what resonates the best in your body and your emotional system, which are the same thing. Chances are, if you are an ENFP at various points in your life, you have been taught that tuning into how you feel and trying out different options and then going with what fits you the best emotionally is not the most practical way to make a decision. And I am here to tell you that that is absolute bullshit. 
for you. The best decision is always going to be whatever decision makes you feel the most alive, the most excited, the most energized, because you are at your best when you are all of those things. When you have that energy, that sense of purpose and drive and passion and the desire to actually be where you are and interact with what you have chosen, fully and completely, you learn better, you work harder, you have the ability to produce above and beyond results. But in order to do that, you first have to set yourself up for success by choosing the options that you actually want to pursue. And in order to know what you want to pursue, you have to try a lot of different things on for size. So this is and will always be the most important part of your decision making process, trying things on and seeing what resonates exploring different options, trying different things on for size as much as possible, and giving yourself time to reflect on and integrate those experiences until you're able to look back on them and really tell which one you feel more drawn to. It becomes really easy to make a decision because you're actually feeling pulled towards something and you can follow that energy forward as opposed to seeing that potential in 10 different areas and trying to just pick the one that makes the most sense. So I remember when I was 17, and I was trying to choose which university I wanted to go to school at and I had scholarships at every school I applied to but one and I had my best friend going to one of these schools and her and I had planned out our entire lives there we we're gonna share this apartment we we're gonna go to all the same classes we we're gonna graduate and get these like high-powered careers in Toronto which was the biggest city that I could conceptualize of when I was a teenager ironically now I live in Toronto and god I hate it there but anyways I had this entire Higher plan for my life and then I decided something in my gut was telling me like just go check out a few other schools just despite the fact that this one makes complete sense in every way go see a few other schools and see if you like them and I stepped onto the campus of the school that I eventually ended up choosing and my entire body was like yeah this is it we're supposed to be here. The energy on that campus, the beautiful old buildings that were all over it, the people who were super friendly and relaxed and seemed really happy to be there, everything about it was communicating to everything in my nervous system that this is where you want to be. This place, for whatever reason, just feels like home. It was suddenly a no-brainer because one place had just resonated so strongly in my body that it felt like there was no question and it's not always that easy and it's not always that overt, but I think that a lot of the time we ignore that body awareness as ENFPs because we've been taught to not trust it. But actually it's that exact body awareness, that exact ability to tune into what's going on for us and recognize what we're feeling pulled towards and what we feel like we can relax our entire selves into that should be guiding our decision making. Because what that body feeling is indicating is that we're interacting with something that allows us to bring our full selves to it. And again, anything we bring that full self to, we are much, much, much more likely to excel at than the situations that we're trying to force ourselves into. Now, step number two is way harder, okay? Now we're gonna talk about what happens after you make the decision. After you make a given decision, there's something that, again, I think is a lot more common to younger ENFPs because it's kind of like the older you get, the more decisions you have under your belt and enough of them start turning out wrong and then you have to fix them. And it's like your introverted sensing eventually internalizes. You can make the wrong choice and life will go on and you probably will make the wrong choice 5,000 more times and life will go on every time. But when you're younger, you don't know that yet. It still feels in your emotional system sometimes like making the wrong choice and closing the door on a given possibility will be the end of the world. Because your SI is still a baby, it doesn't know yet. So step two is about setting up thought boundaries. Once you have made a decision, ruminating over what could have been or what would have happened if you'd gone down a different route is absolutely nothing more than a tactic for keeping yourself out of the present moment. Okay, it is really easy to make up an alternate reality where one different decision meant that we would have no problems ever again, that we would struggle with nothing else ever again, and that our lives would be perfect and pure and problem free if only we had gone down a different path. And there is absolutely nothing less true than that. There are problems down every single path in life 
different problems, but problems. And the reason why you are on the path that you're on and all of these problems are cropping up is because those are the problems that are inherent to that path. But we can be so idealistic with that early extroverted intuition that we can fail to anticipate what's going to be bad about the choices that we make, okay? or what's going to feel difficult, or what we are going to have to struggle with, even if the path that we have chosen is 90% right for us, because down every path, there are struggles. So what you are able to see now is the struggles of the path that you have chosen because you have chosen it. What you cannot see is the struggles that would have come up on the other path. And the reason you can't see those struggles is because you didn't choose that path. It's not because that path is problem free. So to combat that tendency to ruminate over whether or not you made the right choice, what you have to do with yourself is decide, I will not allow myself to dwell on this past decision once I have made it. I was watching a video one time where someone said that every time they try to think of like their ex-partner they imagine a giant stop sign in their brain that just tells them no stop don't go any further and that is their cue to redirect their thoughts to something else when I have a thought boundary sometimes I like to picture like a giant wall just forming in front of me and it's like I try to walk into it and then I bounce backwards and have to head back in the other direction it is this very clear visualization that what I want to think about I'm not going to go near I'm going to literally wall it off in my brain and turn around in the other direction. Now, this is not about repressing things that are important to us. It's about refusing to let ourselves get into rumination loops that lead us nowhere, right? So finding some way to cut yourself off from ruminating on what could have been and redirecting your thoughts is going to be absolutely imperative when it comes to not regretting your decisions. And a lot of the time, I think that what is most helpful is just recognizing that when we get caught in these loops of what could have been and what things would be like in another universe, very often it's because we're trying to avoid what's happening in this universe, right? What is going on in our actual reality that we are currently inside of? It is really easy to take ourselves away from that by spending all of our time imagining if only I'd done something different then everything would be like this. It is a lot harder but a lot more rewarding to look at what actually is, to look at what pain or what grief or what challenge we're facing in our real life environment that we did choose and to choose to stay there and to work with that in real time. That is how we start forming resilience and self-accountability and self-trust is when we decide that no matter what decision we make, even if it's the wrong one, we are not going to self-abandon midway, right? We're gonna stay where we are, we're gonna stick with the decision we've made, and we are going to show up for ourselves fully and completely inside of that decision. There's a Kierkegaard quote that I found when I was, I think also around 17, that I love so much that goes, my honest opinion and friendly advice is this, do it or do not do it, you will regret both. And I think that that is the most key thing to keep in mind here, is that down every single path you take, there will be joy and there will be reward and there will be humongous opportunities for growth and also down every single path there will be regret there is not a single decision you can make in life that will redeem your life forever right there is no giant sweeping redemption arc for your life that is coming. Real change happens in a series of tiny choices that we make over and over and over again in different areas of our lives over a long period of time. Thinkers are a little more familiar with this. It's why they have like pro and con lists. And then for young NFs, it's like every decision looks like two doors and you know that behind one of them is an idealistic redemption fantasy. And then the other one is like the fiery pits of hell. And so we have to choose properly. No, no. No, that is not how it works. Behind door one is some pros and some cons, and behind door two is some pros and some cons. And the third part of this process is about committing wholly and completely to whatever path you have chosen. Because there are humongous opportunities for you to find and cultivate down every single path. But if you are spending so much time thinking about the path that got away or the choice you should have made, you will not notice a single one of those real opportunities as they come up for you because you will not be paying attention.
And that is probably one of the biggest reasons why ENFPs can struggle to feel like they're making the right decisions a lot of the time is because we spend so much time zoned out and not present with our real time environments that we miss a lot of the opportunities that are actually coming up for us. So if you really wanna start making better decisions as an ENFP, yes, there is allowing yourself room to explore and fuck around and find out and there is allowing your intuition and your body awareness to guide you. But the most important decision-making tool you will ever learn is the ability to commit to whatever decision you have made. And that doesn't mean follow it to the depths of hell if you're unhappy. What it means is committing to staying present with whatever it is you have chosen and not mentally and emotionally jumping ship as soon as something comes up that you don't like. It means allowing yourself to stay in the moments that feel uncomfortable or difficult or challenging or filled with grief and choosing to commit to yourself and make the best of those situations even if you don't want to be in them while they're happening. I remember there was one year of my life where I had made a decision that I felt was keeping me from that you know beautiful perfect alternate reality and so I played a thought experiment with myself where I said for six months and six months only, I am going to imagine that there is no other possible world but this one that there was no other possible choice but this one, that I have been mandated to live in this version of reality with these people who are around me in these buildings that I exist in day to day. And I'm going to ask myself, what would I do to make the absolute best of this situation if I knew without a shadow of a doubt that there was nothing else out there for me? And this was all I was ever gonna get to work with. And that year, I shit you not, was like the best year of my life. It truly was. I took a whiteboard and hung it on the wall of my bedroom and it was the first thing I saw every day for six months and it said, this is it. And that was my reminder every day for six months that I am tasked with making this life that I have the best possible life it could be. And I swear to God, that is the hack if I have ever found one to a happy life and to a life without regrets and to a life where every decision we make actually feels like the right one. I should do that again. I'm feeling like I'm heading into a phase of my life where I could bring that whiteboard back. I think I just made this video as like a reminder to myself unconsciously. Anyways, I think that's all that I have to say on this topic for today. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments. Also, reminder that I do run a six week ENFP soul bootcamp course and a six week INFP soul bootcamp course where we talk a lot about all of these things, how to bring your most authentic and inspired and powerful self into every single decision that you make in life. So if you're interested in that, you can go to my website at www.heidiprieb.com, which I will link in the description of this video. Until next time, I love you guys. I hope you're taking care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you back here again soon.